Japan, an island nation, has always looked towards the sea. The vast expanse of the Pacific Ocean has been both a barrier and a bridge, shaping the culture, economy, and history of this unique country. The sea provided sustenance, a means of travel, and a natural defense against invaders. It also inspired a deep respect and reverence for nature, which is evident in Japanese art, literature, and daily life. For centuries it was a land of samurai and shoguns, these warrior elites upheld a strict code of honor and duty known as Bushido, which emphasized loyalty, martial arts mastery, and ethical behavior. The samurai were not just warriors, they were also scholars, poets, and statesmen, playing a crucial role in the governance and cultural development of Japan. But the 19th century brought change. The isolationist policies of the Tokugawa shogunate, which had kept Japan closed off from much of the world for over 200 years, were increasingly seen as untenable. The winds of change were blowing, and Japan could not remain untouched by the global currents of trade, technology, and ideas. The world's powers, fueled by the Industrial Revolution were on the move. Nations in Europe and America were expanding their empires, driven by advances in technology and a hunger for resources and markets. Steam engines, railways and factories transformed economies and societies, creating unprecedented opportunities and challenges. Japan knew it had to adapt or be left behind. Visionary leaders emerged, recognizing the need for change and modernization. They understood that Japan's survival and prosperity depended on its ability to learn from the West, while preserving its own identity and values. The arrival of Commodore Perry's black ships in 1853 was a wake-up call. The sight of these steam-powered vessels bristling with cannons was a stark reminder of Japan's vulnerability. Perry's mission was to open Japan to trade with the United States but, his visit also underscored the need for Japan to modernize its military and economy. Japan saw the firepower of modern navies. The demonstration of Western military might was both a threat and an inspiration. It highlighted the technological gap that Japan needed to bridge if it was to defend its sovereignty and assert its place in the world, it was a turning point. The encounter with Perry's fleet catalyzed a period of intense reflection and debate within Japan. The country faced a choice, resist change and risk subjugation or embrace reform and strive for parity with the great powers of the time. The Meiji Restoration followed, thrusting Japan into a rapid modernization program. In 1868, the Meiji Emperor ascended to the throne, marking the end of the shogunate and the beginning of a new era. The Meiji government embarked on a comprehensive campaign to transform Japan's political, economic and social structures. The goal, become a powerful, industrialized nation capable of competing on the world stage. This meant building infrastructure, adopting new technologies and fostering industrial growth. Factories sprang up, railways crisscrossed the land, and education systems were overhauled to produce a skilled workforce. This meant building a strong military, especially a powerful navy. Japan's leaders understood that a modern navy was essential for protecting its interests and projecting power. They invested heavily in shipbuilding and naval training, drawing on the expertise of foreign advisors and the latest technological advancements. Japan studied the world's best, incorporating the latest technologies into its own designs. Japanese engineers and shipbuilders traveled abroad to learn from their counterparts in Britain, the United States and other leading naval powers. They brought back knowledge and skills that would be crucial in developing Japan's own naval capabilities. Shipyards hummed with activity, launching battleships and cruisers. These massive vessels equipped with state-of-the-art weaponry and armor symbolized Japan's growing industrial and military prowess. Each launch was a testament to the nation's determination and ingenuity. But Japan also understood the importance of air power. The early 20th century saw the advent of military aviation, and Japan was quick to recognize its potential. Airplanes could provide reconnaissance, support naval operations, and deliver strategic strikes, making them a critical component of modern warfare. A new generation of aircraft designers emerged, eager to prove their skills. These pioneers were driven by a passion for innovation and a desire to contribute to Japan's national defense. They experimented with different designs, materials, and technologies, laying the groundwork for future advancements. The stage was set for the creation of the Mitsubishi A6M0. This iconic fighter plane, known for its agility and firepower, would become a symbol of Japanese engineering excellence. Its development marked the culmination of years of effort and ambition, reflecting Japan's journey from isolation to industrial power. The Japanese military had very specific requirements for its new fighter plane, 
They needed an aircraft that could dominate the skies with its superior speed and agility, a plane that could outmaneuver any adversary it encountered. This was not just a matter of preference but a strategic necessity. It had to be fast, maneuverable, and capable of performing complex aerial maneuvers with ease. The ability to quickly change direction and altitude was crucial for dogfights, where split-second decisions could mean the difference between life and death. Additionally it needed to have a long range. The vast expanse of the Pacific Ocean meant that missions would often require covering great distances without the opportunity to refuel. This was a significant challenge that the designers had to overcome. Japan's island geography meant its planes would often operate over vast distances of open ocean. The ability to travel long distances was not just a tactical advantage but a logistical necessity. The aircraft had to be capable of reaching distant targets and returning safely. A long reach was essential. Without it, the Japanese military would be severely limited in its operational capabilities, unable to project power across the vast Pacific theater. The Mitsubishi team, led by the brilliant engineer Jiro Horikoshi, responded to these stringent requirements with an innovative design. They knew that achieving the desired performance would require thinking outside the box and pushing the boundaries of existing technology. They focused on reducing weight to achieve maximum performance. Every gram mattered, and the team meticulously examined every component to see where weight could be shaved off without compromising the aircraft's structural integrity. The Zero, as it came to be known, used lightweight materials, and even had holes drilled in its structure to shave off precious grams. This attention to detail in weight reduction was unprecedented and played a crucial role in the aircraft's performance. This single-minded pursuit of performance gave the Zero an unprecedented combination of speed and agility. It could climb faster, turn tighter, and fly longer than any of its contemporaries, making it a formidable opponent in aerial combat. It could outmaneuver any other fighter in the sky. Pilots who flew the Zero found that they could engage and disengage at will, dictating the terms of the battle and often leaving their adversaries struggling to keep up. In the early days of the Pacific War, the Zero was virtually untouchable. Its combination of speed, agility, and range allowed it to dominate the skies, giving the Japanese military a significant advantage in the initial stages of the conflict. The Zero's reputation quickly grew, and it became a symbol of Japanese aerial prowess. December 7, 1941, Pearl Harbor. The world watched in disbelief as Japanese aircraft wreaked havoc on the U.S. Pacific Fleet. Among the attackers were Zeros, their distinctive red suns emblazoned on their wings. The Zero quickly established air superiority in the Pacific. American and Allied pilots faced a fearsome opponent. The Zero could turn on a dime, climb at incredible rates, and stay in the fight long after its opponents ran out of fuel. It seemed as if the sky belonged to the Zero. Section 4. Turning Points and Technological Leapfrogging In the annals of history there are moments that stand as pivotal turning points, where the course of events shifts dramatically. World War II was filled with such moments, and one of the most significant was the technological leapfrogging that occurred during the conflict. But the tide of war is a fickle thing, it ebbs and flows, influenced by countless factors, from strategic decisions to sheer luck. In the Pacific theater, the early dominance of Japanese aircraft, particularly the Mitsubishi A6M0, was a testament to their advanced engineering and tactical prowess. As the conflict progressed, American engineers were hard at work analyzing captured Zeros. These engineers, driven by a relentless pursuit of knowledge and improvement, meticulously studied every aspect of the aircraft. They pored over its design, scrutinized its performance, and sought to understand what made it such a formidable opponent in the skies. They identified its strengths, but also its weaknesses. The Zero was incredibly agile and had an impressive range, but it wasn't invincible. Through their detailed analysis, the engineers discovered that the Zero's lightweight design, while advantageous in many respects, came at a significant cost. The Zero's lightweight design came at a cost, a lack of armor and self-sealing fuel tanks. These vulnerabilities meant that while the Zero could outmaneuver many of its adversaries, it was also more susceptible to damage. A few well-placed shots could turn the tide of an aerial battle. American industry spurred by the war effort began churning out new fighters. The United States with its vast industrial capacity was able to rapidly produce aircraft that incorporated the lessons learned from analyzing the Zero. Factories operated around the clock, producing planes that were designed to counter the strengths of the Japanese fighters while exploiting their weaknesses. 
planes like the Grumman F-6F Hellcat and the Vought F-4U Corsair were bigger and heavier than the Zero, but they were also faster, more heavily armed, and far more durable. These new American fighters were built to withstand the rigors of combat, with reinforced structures and advanced weaponry that gave them a significant edge, but they were also faster, more heavily armed, and far more durable. The Hellcat and Corsair could take more damage and keep flying, giving American pilots a crucial advantage in dogfights. Their superior firepower meant that they could deliver devastating blows to enemy aircraft, tipping the balance of power in the skies. The technological advantage that the Zero had enjoyed was slipping away. As American pilots gained experience and confidence in their new aircraft, the tide of aerial combat began to turn. The once dominant Zero found itself increasingly outmatched, a testament to the relentless innovation and adaptability that characterized the American war effort. Section 5. The Zero's Fatal Flaw, A Lack of Protection The Zero's lack of armor proved to be its Achilles heel. American pilots learned to exploit this weakness. They would use their superior firepower to engage Zeros in head-on attacks, knowing that even a few hits could cripple the lightly built Japanese fighter. The once-feared Zero was becoming increasingly vulnerable. Japanese pilots, many of them poorly trained replacements for their fallen comrades, were facing a new generation of American fighters and experienced pilots. The tide of the air war was turning, 